First up is the passionate group of volunteers behind New Zealand's largest ecological island and wildlife sanctuary. From the Waipa district, let's hear it for Maunga Tauteri Ecological Island Trust. Good morning everyone, I'm Jim Milcrease, Mayor of Waipa District Council and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Viv Clark um, and Elaine pa Parkinson, volunteers extraordinaire. Um, they've been volunteers from nearly since the start of the project in 2002 and volunteers for this project it's a 24 hour a day, 365 days a year task and Council fully supports the projects and is one of its principal funders. The, the ecological values of the projects are, are absolutely undisputed, but it also has huge economic benefits for the district. And uh, Tourism Waikato just recently have listed the Mangatautri project fourth in the Waikato region as a destination uh, behind Waitomo Caves, Hobbiton and Raglan, and have, uh, I suppose, plans or future that it will in fact surpass some of those other projects. So thank you very much, and I'll hand you over to our volunteers. Viv. Hi, I'm Viv. We have over 400 volunteers and over half of our volunteers work in three to four different areas. I first started volunteering out on the mountain, but today I assist the volunteer coordinator with admin work and I'm the team leader for the reading of pest cards. I help with events too. I'm very good at cleaning and washing dishes. Hello, I'm Elaine. I have been involved with this project since 2004. My roles include hosting at the visitor centre, team leader for the monthly information stall at the Cambridge Market, helping with various events and planting and weeding around the visitor centre. Sanctuary Mountain, our mountain. As volunteers, we take pride in restoring and protecting our mountain. The mountain is owned by 75% Crown, 16% Māori and 9% community. It is a listed attraction for the Waipa District Council promoting natural heritage and tourism. Moa and Huia are already extinct, so it is important for us that Kākāpō don't join that list. We need 6.1 million for annual costs and are proud to have got the project to a stage where people now pay to experience its uniqueness. What do we do? Anything and everything. The work is huge and volunteers will always be needed to cover the multitude of jobs. Recently, a group of our older volunteer ladies cleaned out a grotty old goat shed, literally shoveling S-H-I-T. That's dedication for you. It will be our new plant nursery. A breach team of volunteers and staff is on call 24-7. Usually on the wildest nights, the calls come through. They race to the scene, with a farmer's wife often guarding the damage until reinforcements arrive. All three enclosures are pest free and only mice are still present on the main mountain. We have over 55 kiwi roaming free and export our young to other projects once they are stoat proof. We have two breeding pair of takahe and have hatched eight chicks since their reintroduction. They love our mountain. Volunteers got to crawl through gorse to catch 200 giant weta. Definitely a job of love. Reintroducing species is very expensive and time consuming. Without volunteers, it just couldn't happen. Permits are sought, cages made, species collected, and health checks done. Travel, accommodation, food, scientists, and helicopters for the species all need to be paid. It takes thousands of dollars and weeks of time for each reintroduction. Kaka were the first bird reintroduced on the mountain. They have now been seen in various orchards around the district. Tuatara have their own tuatarium. The New Zealand falcon also is flying around the mountain. Our volunteer professional photographer is responsible for finding a lot of our rare flora. The hotch set of frog, as small as a woman's fingernail, was discovered by a volunteer scientist. It caused much excitement. We have a new building that will become a first-class visitor centre over time. 
Volunteers act as hosts and guides on weekends and public holidays. We also run an education program from a classroom purchased for a dollar. It was completely renovated inside and out by Rotary and our volunteers. Here's a brief overview of our group in action. Our dream is to bring Kākāpō back to Maungatotari. We need your help. One of the world's most rarest and unusual parrots, a kākāpō, is visiting Maungatotari for six weeks. Kākāpō are floatless, nocturnal, one of the noisiest animals in the animal kingdom, the world's heaviest parrot and possibly the oldest living bird on earth. Once widespread throughout New Zealand, the arrival of humans and predators has soon changed that and kākāpō are now only found on a few offshore islands. Kākāpō are known to mate irregularly, triggered by rimu trees producing masses of berries. This ancient instinct does nothing to enhance their breeding ability. Sirocco, an international celebrity, is visiting Maungatotari from August to September this year. Sirocco was born in the wild on Whenua Hall, Codfish Island. Because of an illness, Sirocco became the first ever male kākāpō to be hand raised and has come to enjoy human company more than the company of other kākāpō. Sirocco likes nothing better than to interact with people. That's why he is the world's only spokesbird. Each year, Sirocco visits sanctuaries around New Zealand. This year he is making only one public appearance at Maungatotari. Hosting Sirocco is the first step in a plan for Kākāpō to once again call Maungatotari home for the first time in over 140 years. Our pest-proof fence, the size and height of the mountain and large numbers of rimu trees make Maungatotari the best option for the return of Kākāpō in the near future. The fence at Maungatotari is designed to keep pests out. Sirocco is capable of climbing out of the standard pest-proof fence from the inside. Just one of his many endearing features. With your help, we can build a clip attachment onto the fence to keep Kākāpō in. The Maungatotari Ecological Island Trust invites you to meet Sirocco. Your visit will contribute to the return of Kākāpō to Maungatotari and mainland New Zealand. In doing so, you will help us realise our dream that Maungatotari is made for Kākāpō. During Sirocco's visit, as one of 14 coordinators, I oversaw my 12 volunteers each night, making sure we gave our visitors the best experience possible. We had three overseas volunteers who came over to help for the whole seven weeks, two from America and one from Spain. Our night finished after floors were mopped and vacuumed and the toilets scrubbed clean, but the adrenaline was running high. My role was serving hot drinks and soup and selling merchandise. It was very rewarding to see the look on visitors' faces when they came back, especially the children. They were just buzzing. I have asked several of our, of our Sirocco volunteers if they will be working for the Sirocco visit this year, and they have all said, yes, we'll be there. A number of our volunteers have been with the project since the beginning. Some are now in their 80s, but still like to volunteer where they can. We know the trust value our support. We all value the friendships that we have made. Thank you. Thank you.